This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, that means you're basically like a VIP member and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um first dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is oh. only on Patreon and The most important to me is you get videos of our live shows, but also bonus episodes each month. But if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. Because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. (laughs) This is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this This is is your bloody bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. How is, what is it, Tuesday? It is Tuesday. Oh my gosh. It is quickie day. I feel like these weeks go by so quick. And by the time we tell you something... By the time you hear it, it totally changes. That's, so we're you know what? That's behind. just what happens. That is what it is. And hopefully, well, this part won't change too much. The uh, Well, but by the time I told him we had an escaped convict, he wasn't <laughs> escaped anymore. <laughs> you going to tell us about Danello? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. But like, I mean, otherwise, we need to start letting this come out the next day. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see about that. We'll talk to you about that. <laughs> Danilo. Uh, Danilo Cavacante, the manhunt is officially over. He was caught after being on the run for almost two weeks. Pennsylvania State Police and other agencies caught him early. Uh, what, it was on a Wednesday morning, and they used thermal imaging, which was kind of an unexpected approach. What they did was, um, well, so he had found a backpack. Did we talk about that? He found a backpack, but inside the backpack, this is what he says that there was a razor and that's when he was able to shave and shave his, like his beard and he changed his hair a little bit. I mean, he like braided it up. He found a hat, he found a sweatshirt. Um, and then he, yeah, had been, it looks like he had like dreads or something. Yeah. When they finally caught him, I it didn't looked know like if it his was hair, like braided up yeah, or like matted or something. It I was probably like, was that? matted. Okay. And it, just I bet he smelled really good. Um, he had been seen in and around Chester County several times. At one point, he was seen in a white Ford Transit van that was stolen from a dairy farm. Um, and then I, me- I remember watching all of that, and they were like, "Oh, it has a dent. It has this and this and this." And uh, they f- they found the van, and then he was of course gone already because they were like a few hours behind him. Um, and then right before he was caught, he had stolen a gun from a, from somebody's garage. And then whenever the, after they caught him, the police gave this press conference. And that's when they were talking about how, um, around midnight, the night before they caught him, uh, a home burglar alarm went off in the area and that's what triggered them to get law enforcement to respond. They didn't find him there, but they had tactical squads that were set up and brought, around the area to do the search. Uh, They had aircraft overhead, but then there was like a storm that came and then the helicopters and the air traffic had to go away and leave. And then they were able to come back. And then that's when they had detected a heat signature. Uh And so whenever they finally were back in the air, they went to where the source of the heat signature came from and they found him and he was like completely off guard because I guess he thought that they were 
gone, but then yeah. they maybe had already found that where the heat signature was coming from. It's and true. he said that once law enforcement, um, or once he realized law enforcement was on his heels, then he took with his, st- when he, cause he had that rifle. I th- that's why they like stepped it up a little bit. Once he got that gun, um, he said he tried to crawl like underneath the undergrowth and to the wooded area. Um, but that's whenever, Oh, four-year-old police dog Yoda uh-huh. with U.S. Customs and Border Patrol just gave him a little nibble, and that was it. There were some interesting reports though, that came out that said that he took like boat uh, boots from somebody's home, um, and that he survived on watermelon and like stream water. Oh, okay. And I know that he said that he had buried himself under the brush, and that the officers had come, he's, it's said, within like seven to nine yards of him. Um, and I have a clip. I just, it was like, what was the purpose of this? You didn't get laid. You didn't get no good Mexican food. You didn't get drunk. Like, you just made your life harder. Because I... What he says, and what I'm going to play in this clip, is that he says that he was planning uh, that next day to carjack a car and go to either Canada Can- or Puerto Puerto Rico. Yeah, that's way but too different. Why ways. would you? Not, first of all, why would you not do? Why would that not be your number one plan? Like your first plan? Well, first he had to get a car. Yeah, like why would you not uh-huh. like think of that like a, a week ago? Mm. Um, because now. Maybe he did get Mexican food and get laid and got drunk, and then he was like, now it's time to go. True. Maybe he had his... Because, yeah, he could have... I mean, I think he still had some help from somebody at some point. I thought it was um, Well, they did, they did, but then apparently they came out and they said that she had nothing to do with it. Well, did they still deport her? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) She got to go back to El Salvador. See, brother, you didn't do nothing good coming out. Mm-mm. He probably wanted to go he back by that time. He's like, oh, my it. gosh, I have to sleep on these leaves and I have to cover my poop. OK, so listen to this clip. And he didn't move for the first couple of days, he said. Uh, he survived on a watermelon that he found at a farm. He drank stream water. Um, he was hiding his fecal matter under um, uh, leaves and foliage so that law enforcement couldn't track him. Uh, he, w- he was a desperate man. He also described the backpack that he obtained was obtained uh, early uh, in his flight. He had taken it from a residence, uh, and that's where he obtained a razor. I know a lot of people have talked about how did he get clean, so clean shaven? Did somebody yeah. assist him? Well, quite simply, uh, that razor was in the backpack. So uh, he answered a lot of questions for us, and he also described uh, an increasing amount of law enforcement every day, and that goes for both perimeters. And ultimately, that's why he decided to leave the Longwood Gardens area. He said that on numerous occasions, three times he described that law enforcement officials almost stepped on him within three seven times. or eight yards. Three times. So you're literally saying it was just luck that he finds a backpack and there's a razor in the backpack, that that was just luck. You can't make it up, Aaron. We okay. specifically asked him that question, <laughs> how did he get clean shaven? And he said there was one in the razor in the backpack that he took. We still don't know the exact place where he took that backpack nor do we know the exact location that he took the Eagle sweatshirt as well. He actually uh, said that he was gonna steal stuff where there was opportunity. Um, He was a desperate man that was going day to day um, in order just to survive. Uh, An interesting statement he said also was that his end game was to carjack somebody and to head north up to Canada. And he intended to do that in the next 24 hours. He said the law enforcement presence uh, where he was was immense and that he felt that he needed to leave. He had seen the aerial assets we were using. He had seen the helicopters. So uh, that's why he held on to that rifle for so long. And and did he, you, you said that he survived on stream water and watermelon. Did you talk about anything else about how he was able to obtain food? Um, no, it was just the watermelon, mm-hmm. the stream water. Um, we didn't get too much uh, into what else he was eating, um, but we were interested in the part of, about the carjacking and the right. rifle and his intentions and the end game. Did, did he give you, um, did you learn anything more about that rifle? And uh, I know there'd been, you know, whether his, his willingness to use it. No, but we did learn that before he went into that gentleman's house that he had actually surveilled it. 
and he had said he had surveilled uh, the perimeter where he broke the perimeter at Longwood Gardens for a little while, and he had also surveilled uh, the residence where he stole the truck at Dairy Farms. He said when he stole that truck, there were actually two vehicles that were unsecured there. Um, he decided to take one of them and then flee to an area that he knew. Hmm. And now a word from our sponsors. All right, if you love smoothies or if you love your protein in the morning, you need to get you a Blend Jet. You can do that if you go into blendjet.com. If you enter the code BHH12, you get a discount. And let me tell you, these things are portable. They are easy to use. They can fit in your cup holder. You can have it at home or you can have it in your office like I do. Right this morning, I had my blueberry banana one mm, how was with it? some chia seed. It wasn't chunky or anything? It was very smooth. Wow. When I have it in my shaker, it is a little chunky. Oh, so this is wow. a great alternative. I love it. Um, it is battery powered, so all you have to do is plug it in every two weeks, and the battery never runs down. Oh, my gosh. I love battery-powered things. Go to Blendjet's and order you a Blendjet and get a discount. Thanks, April, for sharing. Did you know you could be putting oil and chemicals in your coffee? I love coffee creamer, but I don't think I've ever turned the bottle around to actually see what's inside. When I did, I found out many of my favorite creamers contain ingredients I would never intentionally add to my coffee cup, like canola oil, dipotassium phosphate, ew, and artificial flavors. Laird Superfood all started when big wave surfer Laird Hamilton needed morning fuel that could allow him to spend the entire day chasing the ultimate wave. He couldn't find anything in the market that met his ingredient standards, so made himself the ultimate plant-based creamer. Laird Superfood started and launched its first product, Original Superfood Creamer, in 2015. Laird Superfoods contain no artificial flavors, colors, or additives, and no sugars from highly refined corn syrup. All Laird products are sustainably sourced and thoroughly tested to ensure that you're incorporating the cleanest, finest fuel in to your routine. All Laird products are also made of all natural whole food ingredients and they are crafted from the highest quality all natural real food ingredients. Are you ready to feel more energized, focused, and supported? Go to LairdSuperfood.com and add nourishing plant-based foods to fuel you from sunrise to sunset. Use our promo code BOO at checkout to save 15% off your purchase today. I'm your puzzle pal, and I'm going to tell you about my latest obsession, Wongo Puzzles. These things are the real deal, folks. They're high quality, handcrafted, and perfect for anyone who loves a good challenge but doesn't want to dedicate their entire kitchen table to puzzles for a week. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> and I might still be there. But I got one of these actually for Christmas. I loved it. I did it, and I was so proud of myself. And they have all these cool designs, and you need to go to wongopuzzles.com and use our discount, BHH. You get 10% off, and I really want to know if you'll order one of these puzzles. How would you think about it? Because it's so fun, and I need to order, like, five. Cure hydration. If you are obsessed with your hydration like I am, this may be something good for you. This is something that is so easy Forget about the Gatorade. That just dehydrates you even more. And if you don't like the taste of coconut water, try Cure Hydration. You can go to my offer link. It is zen, Z-E-N, dot A-I slash B-H-H 20. This is vegan. It's no added sugars. It's just a little packet you could put in your water. Or if you're really smart during happy hour, you could put it into your Tito's. It is just as effective as an IV drip. And it's... If you don't not like the taste of water, it's not as boring as water, not as sugary as the sports drink. And if you're an athlete, it'll give you the best performance. Or if you just get brain frog or headaches because you do not stay hydrated. Brain frog? Brain fog. <laughs> the brain solution frog. is cure hydration so go to that link enter the code you can go to my offer link it is zen z-e-n dot a-i slash b-h-h 20 cure hydration it would he, st he stole that white van right yes that is the most suspicious vehicle to steal <laughs> 
Everybody, when you see a white van, everybody looks inside. Like, I even, like, memorized the first three it's, of the license plate when I see a white van. I mean, I... <laughs> And he was small. He could have just like gotten away and like blended in. He was just like five foot nothing. Like he really could have just gotten. I like, mean, I'm glad they caught him because yeah. he didn't. Because uh, what he did was, well, he like had a, committed a crime in Brazil, and then he like fled, and then he came here and he stabbed his girlfriend like 32 times in front of their two of her two kids. Uh, yeah, he needed to be caught. But mm. the guard who was on duty, he got fired. We yeah. talked about that. How he, like, what was he doing? Just watching porn? Yeah. Taking a nap? TikTok. TikTok. It's a time suck. He was going down the TikTok hole. He was like, oh shit, I forgot to count my oh, prisoners. Oh, it's comes back to China. <laughs> so, whew, Well, yeah. you know, he, uh, Gonzalo was gone for three weeks. Was it three weeks? Three weeks. I just looked it up. And then... Oh, I didn't look up Casey, Casey. And oh, I think they were like a week. But the Texas seven, six weeks. And they got the furthest because they were in Texas, obviously. They were caught in Colorado Springs. Seven and they lived one? it up. Yeah. Yeah. They lived it up. And it like this Gonzalo and this guy, they got out for nothing. Like they just got out to suffer. Ted Bundy, what did he do? Got out, stole credit cards, like got a bunch of wine. He got a bunch of like gourmet meals. He lived a whole life as another person. Yeah, he like, knew what he was doing. Like if you're gonna escape, like to, get did something it, out of it. Yeah, like get a new identity. Like you have to have a plan. You have to have your out. Like if he was in a gang, wouldn't his gang be like, okay, you know, you know like hook him up? Problem was he was from Brazil and he probably just didn't have many people here. <laughs> Mm. Cavacante. Or else, what was it Brazil or El Salvador? I Brazil. Think it's Brazil. It's yeah. b- you know, they're probably the same place. Maybe. <laughs> you know us in our geography. Well, I mean, I was a teacher at one point for geography. <laughs> Moving on to Koberger. Let's do it. Uh, I mean, we have this is the cameras in the courtroom situation. Yeah. So Judge Judge said that cameras in the courtroom, uh, what did I what did I write down earlier? He feels it seems that he feels very concerned about what's going on outside of the courtroom versus what's going on inside of the courtroom. Um, And he thinks that he basically thinks he can control the Internet because it's all coming back to social media. And he didn't like how, you know, stuff is edited and stuff is portrayed and people are making clips and like it's not going to be any better without the cameras. People are going to speculate more and you're going to have more of a flood of people in the courtroom. Mm. I think. Yeah. I mean, it, I just think it'll leave, it'll leave questions. People will question the verdict and all that. stuff. it'll just leave more questions. I don't so, know what the answer is. Well, so this is what was interesting. I know that the defense, they, they said that the media focus infringes on Koberger's rights and that the way that they are placed, that they don't need to be placed behind them they should just be placed in the back of the courtroom so at least they were like okay with the idea still against it but they're like if it needs to be this is where we want it to be um and the prosecution agree like they also don't want cameras Mm -hmm. like neither side want cameras because it's probably going to be easy to but they say the prosecution says or something the prosecution said that they want, they didn't want the sensitive, like if people didn't want to be, like sensitive testimonies, like if people didn't want to be on camera, they didn't want to, go, you know, expose them. Like, well, you don't have to have, the, like there's been plenty of cases that are on camera where they either just like pan to some, some other screen um. and they just have the audio or they just have you listening. That way it does not showing their face. I mean, and that's an option. Um, so this is what the, uh, the Goncalves family and, um, Z- the current Kernodal Kernodal. family said is that it is vitally, imp- it is vitally important that this trial be open to the public 
to view and to watch. There is an enormous amount of media coverage about this case, some good, some bad. And with that comes the responsibility of the court to ensure a fair trial. This case is surrounded by secrecy. Everything is either sealed or unread. Unread? Uh, the family has not received any discovery on this case or any information about the facts of this case from the state. No one knows about anything about the case, which leads to speculation. This speculation is fueled by the secrecy surrounding everything that is filed and every hearing is, that is closed off to the media and the public. And I agree with that. I think that it does lead to speculation and it leads to more uh, of a circus. But, okay, so whether the cameras are in there, so if the cameras are in there, the jury is going to see their view anyways, right? Yeah. So no matter where the camera is, the jury is going to see their live view from their seats that are not going to change, whether they choose to focus on Kohlberger or the person testifying, they still, no matter what, can you still can't go home and you can't look at any articles and you can't right. go online. So those rules don't change or you get taken off the jury. So I don't understand. I mean, I can see how it can mess them up, but I don't see how that's going to mess with the jury. I, how I, we see it, like where the camera is placed or not, or or who they focus on. Or. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know either. I don't either. Hmm. I think there's some. I think the prosecution and the state, there's some shady stuff going on, and they don't want it out. Hmm. At least that's what House and Habit has told me, and so I believe everything she says. There we go. Um, let's touch on eight passengers. What did we all... Okay, so Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand. So they have... Apparently, they've recently... You know, they're both in being held mm-hmm. without bail, and they're having some medical issues. Oh. Uh, do they need so, a certain diet? Um, I don't know. Um, But one of them is... Uh, She's just been under medical observation. And then Jody Hildebrand, the one that has the connections, uh, she has been in the hospital. She's experienced life-threatening medical issues. (laughs) What great timing. And she's been in the hospital for several days. And then, okay, so her, uh, Rudy's husband. So it was Rudy. Yeah. Rudy? Yeah. Ruby. Ruby, Frankie. Yeah. Ruby's husband has not been arrested. And he, I mean, was... There yeah. for a lot of it. Didn't he just yeah. leave like basically the other day? So he, so his attorney comes out. Lesbian? Yeah. Right. So his attorney comes out and makes a statement saying that Jody manipulated him in conjunction with Ruby. Oh. And that th- that was the spearhead in destroying his life and his family was Ruby getting involved with this connection stuff and that he was victimized also. Hmm. Mm. Hildebrandt may go down for all of it. Did you see she had like a niece, I think, come out and give a interview with um, a reporter? And at first, you know, you I always think the people who come out of the woodworks are a little sus, like the classmates of Koberger or uh-huh. this person or this person. But she, in the beginning, you kind of are like, mm, but then she goes and she's talking and it see it did seem real. And she and she was saying that. This is how she is. She constant like she did this to her when she was little. She is a horrible, horrible person, and she needs to go. And it's just wow. Just gave her experience of it. Um. So let's see. They they made a virtual court. Of, oh gosh, there was a court appearance because they were having like a, a hearing, and somehow the link to the like web. WebEx or whatever, the link to it got s- sent out over like TikTok or something. So that instead of just having like the judge and a few media and the defendants, there was 1,300 people, <laughs> <laughs> mostly TikTokers. And so all these people try to log on and then it was this whole big thing and she ended up entering, uh, they did not enter a plea. Is that what he said? Yeah. But, um, they're held they're going to be held behind bars until September 21st when they actually have like a hearing. They they said that they are okay they are accused of 
causing or permitting serious injury to children in three different ways through a combination of physical injuries or torture through starvation or malnutrition that jeopardizes your life and by causing severe emotional harm. Mm. First responders said that, uh, all that stuff, there were sores all over the kids' bodies. Well, I think it may be because so much of it is documented and videoed. Yeah. But how do you prove it besides like, what you allegedly well, and then, alluded and then to on a Ruby, video. Ruby Frankie came out and she blamed the kid. And she said that, well, her her son had had abused over 20 other people. And so it was his fault. And even on the 911 call, the little boy who escaped told the neighbor, she's like, well, it's actually my fault that I'm like, that that's happened to me. <laughs> like, so they've like completely brainwashed mm-hmm. these poor kids. Um and yeah it's wow it's it's bad that this what hildebrandt it says that she has a master's degree in psychology and uh so that's how her and uh frankie or what ruby frankie that's how they like w- just kind of joined forces to like have the to co-host the, like parental advisory podcast like parents advice for parents um but that they were like downplaying eating disorders and they would blame rape victims and stuff like that. Speaking of Utah, a f- our, one of our mutual friends, we'll just say Becky, Becky B. Okay. That you work with mm-hmm. went the other weekend because her son played there. Mm-hmm. And um, her post was, this was, lit- talk about Utah, literally the friendliest state we have ever visited. And I was like, come on, Becky, I need to let oh, you listen to some stories. No. That is the opposite of what you need to be thinking about these They Utah try to get people. you in. <laughs> That's what they do. They are- so I was like, does your husband want to have seven more wives now? Oh, she's going to move to Utah. Do you want to homeschool your kids? She's going to move to Utah. Um, <laughs> do not homeschool. Okay, homeschool, maybe. You know what? Just... Uh, it's always it's it's it, it's opposite of what my shirt says. Not a red flag. Not a red flag. Um, Sarah Boone also has written another letter. I will not read you this letter because it is that long. Gosh. And she has a new attorney. I can't. I can't with her. There's another hearing coming up, and it is. I just th- this. This is like it is a song that never ends. I just go on, on and, and on, on and yeah. on, and that is how Sarah Boone's case is going right now, mm-hmm. and it's really kind of funny. It's actually really. It's pretty comical. Yeah, she is the worst. I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna post the letter on our Patreon, and you have got to read it because it is really funny. How many pages she's is so, it this time? I don't know. It's like four or five. Oh gosh, she's so bored. But she is. She knows she is the smartest person in the room, and she probably feels so good about herself after she writes these. And she's like, she's probably like, this is it. This oh, is the yeah. letter that's going to change yes. my life. Yes, they're just going to overturn my sentence after this. Oh, don't let me forget about Jen Shaw and Elizabeth Holmes. You know, they are both in the same federal prison yeah. down to Bryan. We got to go visit them. They have now become besties. Ooh. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. So Jen Shaw is like leading this fitness class. Oh. Shaw amazing abs. <laughs> and Elizabeth is taking the class. What? Are Y'all, they going to be like Piper and Alex off of Orange they're is the gonna New Black? Make, they're going to make a Real Housewives of the Pen and it's going to go, it's just going to go viral. I mean, they're going to, it's, we have to go. We have to find a way. I don't think we will. <laughs> oh, it's a, oh, also Jen Shaw has taken a motherly role towards Elizabeth. So she's the top. <laughs> I don't know how it works. She's taken a motherly role towards her because, you know, that uh, Elizabeth had just had that baby, you know, and apparently Jen's giving her a lot of advice. <laughs> They're less. They're they're prison lesbos. Uh, I don't even think they don't even look. They wouldn't match. Well, okay. J- Elizabeth is in there for like eleven years, and Jen's in there for six. Mm, I guess after a while. I mean, what else you gonna do? Exactly. 
So that's there you go. Anything else that's come up? I mean, there has there are some other stories, but the, listen, there's so much happening. Yeah, there's a whole lot. That was that was good. We needed all those updates. I knew Danello was going to be on there because that my when that press conference came out because it came out. I guess he got caught early in the morning. Yeah, and I it was, was like, like an eight thirty press. And conference. I was like waiting for the press conference, and I was like waiting, waiting, waiting. I was like, watch my phone ring. Watch my phone ring as soon as it comes on, comes on, and my boss calls me. And I was like, you are calling me during the press conference. <laughs> they caught the escape convict. <laughs> somebody showed me a meme, and it was like of the police chief or somebody asking, did you catch him in a in a trench coat like the little rascals was it two of them stacked on each other you know because like oh, in the movie because yes. they're so he's so short and it was so <laughs> and how all the cops they like all lined up and took oh a, like, took a picture, picture I, I was looking i was zooming in like oh he's cute he's cute he's cute man that's some <laughs> good looking and yeah that like his blood all down his face oh yeah Don't know. And he just probably wanted a good shower and i know i like, was wondering used toilet if he, like, paper I know. Apparently I would have broken into people's house to use their... I would have took a bath. People would have been reporting. Somebody broke in and took a shower and took a shit <laughs> and and ate my queso. Like, he just took watermelon. I, do, what do y'all eat in Pennsylvania? Because he took snap peas at one place. <sighs> He's is there healthy. only vegans? He's really healthy. Maybe he is. Maybe he is from Brazil. Maybe. Maybe he don't eat like Americans. Oh, that's true. I think he probably ate some of the like leaves or something. I mean, he was he said that he would not move at all during the day. He didn't want the dogs to sniff the meat like Daniel in the lion's den. There it is. That's why they didn't find him. James the Giant Peach. <laughs> all right, y'all. We will see y'all Thursday for a full episode. We're going to Florida. Oh don't forget God. to stay aware. Stay alive. And always be DTL. Bye, y'all. Goodbye. Hola, yo soy Jackie. Y yo soy Jessica. Y esto es Zona del Crimen. Un podcast donde hablaremos sobre casos de crímenes reales y eventos impactantes que han quedado marcados a través del tiempo. Recuerden que nos pueden seguir en Facebook, Instagram o donde escuches tus podcasts favoritos. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By, By the, the Cover, Cover Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> we cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget this month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. <laughs> for sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it It's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. <laughs>